Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Kellen Mond, part two. We are diving into it. This should be a good one. Some really impressive throws on a number of different levels. Fired up. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Kellen Mond, part two. Quarterback School. College football draft analysis. Put this one on there because I love a good wrap in down the hash. This is a Sunday window. Now, this thing is a little tardy, just a tick, but it still fits it in a tight window. That's a Sunday opening right there, concept-wise. Again, I know I've talked about it before on this channel, but I think it's worth talking about again, just the idea of what exactly this wrap in is, how you attack it. So usually some variation of, we're getting in here, onto that hash area almost as fast as we can, some sort of hitch, pivot, whatever you want to call it right here, and you're just reading whoever this flat defender is, whoever this hook defender is, the near defender. He drives this thing. you got to anticipate this throw. This is an anticipation throw. He barely gets it up and down in the lane, but this is something that just about every NFL team will ask him to do. There it is, that little in-gather whip route. They run with 85. It's inside, and then to me it's just a tick late. Just love to see just a half a second earlier. But he's still got the arm talent to be able to get it in, fit it in a tight window, laser. But again, from the back end here, you can really see just the timing of this thing, what it looks like. Look at his eyes. Beautiful eye discipline. Look off to the left. Come back as soon as 10 engages with it. There it is. Let it go right now. Let it go. Quick. Just a half tick. You can see just the, the window opening, and you literally throw it right down the hash. It's a thing of beauty. Let it play full speed just so you can see just the timing of it. Just a half count late. Boom. Love it. Be able to pick up that speed, quicken up, quicken up the drop, anticipate that thing. Next one, this is a beautiful concept. Throw down here to the bottom of the screen. Straight up, laser. Love how they're attacking this. Just cover three beater. But again, quarterback wise, little counter pass. His base, perfect. No heel click. Driving the ball to the field outside the numbers. Touchdown. So concept, how they're getting there. You can really like what they've got going offensively down here. We're going basically post. And really this thing is not really, it's here, but it's really to take the corner out of here. Let's get this corner out of here. He's going to follow it. And then we're going to really attack this flat defender. So he's going to be coming here. We're going to run almost at him like a delay. And then we're going to let this post go. And we're going to slip right into that space. So just a fancy way to get to post wheel, slant wheel, however you want to call it, attacking the same area of the field. But you still have to be able to throw this outside the number strike from the middle of the field. Boom. One more time. Concept. Just watch the slot receiver. Nice little a nice little avoidance here. Up. Whoop. Escape. Inside release. That's not a huge window. That's a that's a nice throw. Nice anticipation of it. Driving it. When's he let this thing go? He's throwing it right there. Separated. There it is. Drive that thing. And again, that's a beautiful strike accuracy. The accuracy leads to a touchdown. And th these types of throws are all over the film. Whoop. Love it. Next one. Again, just stacking good plays here. This one, he's going through a quick read up top. No. Switch his hips. Come down. Find a little spot or looper. I don't care that he drops it. We're looking just at the quarterback. Again, getting through the read. One, two, three, no, switch. There it is. And that's a good enough ball, got to be caught. So being really picky, I think you could, and without knowing exactly what the scheme is that they're running here, so I'm not going to talk a whole lot of detail like pretending that I know, but it sure looks like he's got this window. So it looks almost like a slant, short post right there. I think they end up running a cross spot or basic spot right here. You're making the argument, I think this ball probably could get thrown right here. <clears throat> excuse me, but if you don't like it, what I love about this play and why it's here is we set it here, no, quick, shuffle our feet, get back, get lined up, and really, so it's getting to one if those two are together, two, three, really quick, right? One, two, three, you can play for me. There it is, just about any offense in the league. Really nice to see him be able to put it together right here. One, two, three, no. And again, this will come up a handful of times. You know, first of all, the clip is on here because of the way he moves his feet no, boom, quick twitch back, beautiful base. Now, being super picky, I think I talked about this the first time we saw him play. I'm not a huge fan of this drop. And what I mean by that is big one and then dance one, two, basically getting no depth. I just think it's hard to be consistent throwing the ball like that. 
It's not rhythmical. One, one, two. And he gets away with it in this game. It's just personal preference, whatever me, over detailed, whatever you want to say. I just think it would make, smooth him out to have kind of a smooth, even drop to it. Check the ball location here. Away from the near defender, two hands. Got to catch it on the body, on the break. Thing of beauty, hand it to him. Can't catch it for him, as my man Jeff Blake used to tell me all the time on the stair climber. Next one here. Now, this is not good. This is staring down a receiver. And again, if you watch this channel, you know that one of my biggest pet peeves with the position is when guys get guys hit hard unnecessarily. And that's what this is. This is staring down a receiver. Now, I can't tell you what they're trying to do here because this to me is kind of a combo-ish of concepts. So where the ball ends up going to me is almost like an air raid, wide cross type route. It's not really a special, like a four verts, West Coast World, number three, all go special. This to me looks like up top, like a variation of dagger. And then down here, I think we get a comeback. So the reason why I say it's melding things together is really because that is dagger up top. And then this is usually like, like a variation of air raid wide cross. And usually you read this thing one to two with, and you can make this single wide receiver, whatever you want. But if you do this, so the reason I say that is if you do work this cross, usually you don't stare at it the whole way. Because when you do, you allow players over here to now get their eyes to that crosser. In the air raid world, the little that I know, obviously not certified, but pretty familiar with the play, your eyes will be over here, one, right? One, and then you come back to two. And it keeps these players from hitting the cross like this. So again, to me, he's staring this thing down. And again, without being in the room, I don't pretend to have all the answers, but I can tell you that you don't stare down receivers like this. So if he was to just look to the comeback down here, say, no, that flat defender's out underneath the comeback, right? He's not, we don't like that comeback. Now let's work the cross. And that's a big window. But because he's staring at the cross, number seven's allowed to see that, drive towards it, and put a lick on him. And that's dangerous. And again, I'm just being real with this. This is stuff that you don't love to see. And I don't think, you know, I didn't see it a lot. It just felt like this one. I was like, well, why are you staring down the over like that? I mean, it's just, it's, it was uh, out of the ordinary. But you can't take it away. I mean, that, those are things that wide receivers and tight ends are going to remember. Next one here. Again, nothing there. You forget he's a dynamic athlete. Get out and run. Make somebody miss in space. Long stride. Big first down with your feet. Love to see this types of stuff show up on film. Don't force it down the field. Nothing there. Two hands on the ball. No, no, no. Two hands on the ball. Accelerate. Then make somebody miss. Nice. Get the first down. Great. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already. Please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications, let you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I certainly appreciate the support for the channel. Then you're looking for more quarterback school. Check out the free quarterback school course. Quick game, six videos over 90 minutes. Lots of fun with it. The link is in the description. I appreciate it. Let's keep it going. Next one. This is a beautiful throw. I love seeing these types of things show up on the film where you're really driving the ball again. Down the field, look at his eyes this time, work up top. No, flip down, yes, drive down the field. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a defensive guru, but I'm going to tell you that this is not great safety play. But it doesn't take anything away from the quarterback execution. Again, eyes to our left. Working smash up top, variation of smash. No, all the way back, driving like a pump or like seven up type of route down here to the bottom of the screen. It's a beautiful throw. And these drive throws like this show up all over the film, saturated with these types of throws down the field. Again, concept-wise, they're coming out here working a variation of what I'm going to call deep smash. And it's really more of a hook with just the depth of it, but whatever. Down here, this is more pump or seven-up type route where you're coming into the corner and then up the seam. Now, normally, okay, let's just talk normally, this is not a great play versus quarters or palms or whatever, split field coverage. Down here, the, you know, th this guy should be able to make this play. Why he doesn't, right here, the quarterback, eyes him open here. He dresses him down, looks him off, everything good. Really nice. 
But what that safety is doing on the near hash, I can't tell you. Other than looking at his eyes, he, he gets him open with some eye manipulation, shoulder manipulation, you know, one more time full speed just to appreciate you know the drive of this throw down the field. One, two, three, no. Switch around. Boom. That's a thing of beauty. He does a really nice job with his lower half and his upper half, really, of getting through these reads. These It shows up all the time. There's nothing easy about this. Having a lot of faith in the concept, the system, understanding what you're looking at, controlling the offense, and then being able to control the rock down the field and drop in lasers. And it's not just like one good throw. The good throws are really, you know, seemingly every drive. Again, two by two here for me. This is a little bit of, uh, you know, how they teach either their kind of all-go package, six package, however they want to classify it. There's a little stutter go down here to the bottom of the screen. But really, this wide receiver just falls off. Whether they allow their wide receivers to fall off down here, it's coming out. And at the end of the day, it's just four verticals. Right, that, that's what it is. But he runs kind of a stutter. He's running into the seam. He runs a stutter. Well, this corner is he can't run by him. So what does he do? He falls off. They're on the same page, and he drives this thing again outside the far numbers. Stutter, corner is trying to play two to one down here. Beautiful base, and that's just a. I mean, it comes off easy, right? It's like an easy flick. Uh, nothing easy about this throw. One, two, three, no. Woo. Fall off right on him. Just X on the chest right there. Just love the effortless kind of flick of it. Boom. Great arm action, clean release. Really fun to watch. Two by two. You know, this is just a massive throw to the field. He makes it look easy. There's a handful of these throws, you know, way outside the numbers. He makes it look easy. Now, again, just as this is just me, aesthetic me. You know, I'm I'm not a fan of this drop, this type of drop. But he gets it to work for him. And if it works for him, great, do you. I just think it you you I don't know, it's almost like wasted movement to a certain extent to drop to nowhere, just strictly a timing drop. The timing is excellent. The accuracy is excellent. He's lined up, no hitch, all his cleats in the ground. Look when he decides to throw this thing, right? The guy's right at the top of his break. That is a laser outside the numbers. I mean, keep saying laser because they keep showing up. Whoop. That's impressive. And there were there were a number of really impressive throws in this game. It was fun, it was fun to check out. Love the accuracy of it. Again, a couple more here. This is a touchdown to a corner up top to the tight end. Again, this is nothing easy about this throw. Not setting his feet. Someone right in his face. He's getting hit. The sniffer. Tight end. No, two guys in his face. Falling away, fading away. And you can see the torque and power that he's able to create without his feet in the ground. This off balance, off platform. I mean, he's getting driven to the ground. He's hot off two there. Boom. And that's a, it's a perfect throw. I mean, it really is. It's kind of uh, unnerving. You know, he's obviously wide open, but it's a perfect throw. It would be a completion versus great coverage. And there's no, you know, there's no hand grenade, balloon, seven iron out there. That thing is driven off the tee box with someone right in your lap. I love it. Just really, really impressive throw. Nice to see that kind of execution in the red area. Down here, this is a no to a seam, yes to a comeback. I have no idea how this wide receiver didn't get his feet in here for a completion. But again, I'm just really enjoying him getting through his reads. So they got like a little trick him trying to hit the pop to the sniffer on our right. He says no to that seam pop. And then yes to the comeback. And it's, you know, I don't know if it's smooth, but it, it's technically sound. You know, it's a little bit, I would say like rigid almost in the elbows, been around some, you know, the the guy who played ahead of me in high school was a guy named Gio Carmazzi, got drafted by the 49ers, great athlete, dynamic athlete, but he was really upper body stiff. Now, I don't think Kellen Mond is that quite that stiff, 
but there is kind of just a rigidness of his elbows, of his posture that I don't think helps his accuracy, but he's so twitchy. And this, this is not a perfect throw, but it is an easy one, two, let it rip. And again, you, you got to catch this ball here. Like that's inbounds throw. That looks like you're trying to step out of bounds. I mean, that's hard to do. I'd be, I would be not happy with nine. Again, just checking the seam down here to the bottom of the screen. So off of play action. Seam, no. A little late. Come back, yes. I'd like to see, you know, maybe just a half tick earlier so we can get the anticipation to the comeback. Let it go right now. But again, that's super picky. Still able to go one to two to a comeback. Now this time it's to the near side. But again, I just really love seeing quarterbacks get through the reads, drive the ball down the field, throw catchable balls consistently. And he's putting on a clinic this game. Now I know, you know, this isn't Alabama, but we'll get to that one too. And it's just nice to see him operate at a high level, being consistent, driving the ball down the field. Play fake, no, yes. Again, you can see just, you know, maybe a half reset late. That's just being honest here. One, no, yes. That half reset late pushes him out of bounds, but still should have been a catch. This last one is a ridiculous throw. It's a ridiculous throw. Uh, now, the other part of it is, I'm not sure it probably should have been thrown, but this is a ridiculous throw to even throw this ball, let alone to see where it hits. Okay, Now, I don't care if the defender hits it right here. Well, let's just assume he doesn't. He might get his finger on it. That hits the, in the guy's hands, outside the numbers, on the sideline. This is a third and forever play. Okay, the concept here is just a variation of sail, uh, whatever you want to call layers. Usually must outside release. Seven deep out, out, whatever you want to say. Here, sometimes you'll run this with a flat. This time they run it with like a loop or a whip, so he's going to come back. Now the thing about it here, you know, middle field closed. What you should usually have outside leverage. You know, most defenses out here, you'll be an inside based on where the divider line is. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I know a really good course on coverages. But th this is going to be a hard throw versus middle field closed man because he should be outside on all these out routes. So just decision-wise here, you can see, you know, if he goes to the loop, it's probably a first down. But <laughs> this is a ridiculous throw. Again, you can see the loop come open at number two or the reverse whip, whatever. It's probably a first down, right? Catch and get a first down. But look at the coverage. First of all, the great job by the wide receiver getting outside. But the guy's right in his hip. I mean, he's in his hip. That ball is out of his hand. He throws that thing before he breaks at the top. But the accuracy up on his face on the sideline. I mean, I just kind of like am in awe of this throw. And it just, you know, maybe not a perfect read, but a ridiculous arm talent, accurate driven ball outside the numbers far hash i mean i keep saying the same things because it's the same type of impressive throw and i think he could make his life easier if he dovetailed and got lined up see how he's here and then watch what he does with his lower half he has to shift around it just makes him a, a tick late you know it's that that's a really hard throw all the way to the field on the sideline but man efficient upper body and just a just a really impressive throw. These drive throws where he can really torque and generate all sorts of force and be accurate, special. So that is a wrap. Kellen Mond versus Arkansas. Pretty excited to take another peek at him, probably versus Alabama, a little closer to the draft. Again, let me know what you think of the analysis in the comments. I appreciate it. See you next time. Have a good one.